Well, uh, we will begin now. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank everybody uh, who has, uh, has joined our Zoom meeting as an attendee. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Jason Shepard. Uh, we'll be taking your, call or your uh, questions. Uh, I've got some questions that have already been sent in uh, over the last couple of days uh, from people uh, already. So we've got some of those. Uh, if you're an attendee and would like to ask a question, you have the opportunity to do that here. We are joined by the head coach of the BYU baseball team, Mike Littlewood, as well as associate head coach, Trent Pratt, pitching coach, Michael Bradshaw. We also have uh, former BYU baseball player, Jackson Clough, uh, joining us, Hayden Latham, left fielder, and uh, the director of baseball operations, who I have to say is looking pretty small right now, uh, Tuckett Slade is joining us. He's not gonna like that very much, but that's fine. How are you guys doing? It's good to see you guys. I've not seen you in forever. I'll have to unmute everybody. We're, we're doing, go we're doing awesome. Yeah, we're doing yeah. awesome. How, doing how are good, you, Jace? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm hanging out uh, at Shepherd Estates, uh, just hanging out in my bedroom. Uh, I see a lot of you are, you're, Coach, you're in your office. Trent, you're in, the, uh, you're in the cages. Jackson, you're in the cages. It's, uh, it's, I wish I was where you guys are right now. It's probably got to be nice to just be around the facilities. Yeah, it's awesome. I, you know, our facilities are closed officially through the month of May, so we can't do a whole lot here. But I try to sneak in every day and just kind of piddle around. It makes me feel, makes me feel normal, makes me feel at home. So um, just to see my, the bats back here, uh, my fungal collection, <laughs> is, is, when I see that every day, I'm all good. So. Yeah, it's good. This will be fun today. Appreciate everybody yeah. joining us and doing it. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions. And um, first thing, I'll, I'll just make sure everybody's aware. Um, there may be some questions that I direct specifically to a certain person. But by all means, if, if anybody wants to add anything new uh, or add anything to it, whether you were specifically asked the question or not, feel free. I mean, we've got a lot of people that are tuning in because you guys are the experts. You guys are the ones uh, that they'd like to get the information from. And so I, I guess the first question, and we'll start with coach, um, what are you having your players do right now? I mean, obviously the, the season would be going on right now normally. What have you asked your players to do to stay in shape during this time of, you know, kind of upheaval? Well, you know, um, Coach Homo, Tom Homo, our, our boss, our athletic director, a couple of months ago when all this broke, gave us some some good advice and the, the first thing he said was for everybody to take care of themselves um to make sure make sure you're healthy and then secondly to make sure their families are healthy and so um that's the number one thing we're doing right now is making sure everybody's staying safe but but at the same time our guys have to get ready in case summer ball's going to be played and so we're just asking them to be safe but also to get their work in as as much as they possibly can while still uh, practicing social distancing and, and doing all that stuff. So most guys, I'm making calls to, we had a Zoom meeting with our team last week, um, and I'm making calls to, to uh, met like three or four calls a day to guys. I just talked to Mitch McIntyre today, had a good conversation with him. Um, a few teams are, are contacting him about the draft, and so we had, we had a, a conversation about that. And so there's, a, you know, everybody's got their own individual things going on, and so we're just trying to stay in touch with everybody. Hey, Hayden, as the player here um, that's currently on the team, what, what are you doing to stay in shape? How are you trying to stay as, as fresh as you possibly can? Yeah, I've uh, actually had some private access to a gym, so that's been really big for me to be able to get in the gym and work out. Um, but as far as baseball stuff, I've been trying to long toss a couple times a week, going to hit every night, doing a bunch of machine work, things like that. So just trying to stay in as – close to playing shape as I possibly can without playing games. Trent and Jackson, this, this next question is going to be for you guys. Cause I know you guys are, you're in the cages right now and we have had a ton of fans that have been asking questions in regards to hitting drills and asking what kind of hitting drills they can do to improve their swing. Uh, maybe I'll turn the time over to you guys in the cages um, and, and maybe you can demonstrate some, some hitting drills or maybe some tips that you guys think would be, would be good for, for players out there that may be watching right now. Yeah, I'll have – we can do that a little bit, and I can have Jack demonstrate some stuff. I think the biggest thing for us, especially with young kids, is 
man, find a place to hit and, and get on a tee a little bit because a lot of times you're by yourself. And so these are some drills that you can probably do by yourself or with your dad or your mom or, or brother or someone. So I'll have Jack hop on the cage here, strapping his batting gloves on. I guess he can wear red gloves now. That's okay. <laughs> he, is, he is property of the Washington Nationals right now, so that's probably yeah. okay. It's okay. I'm, I'll let this one slide, but let's see what he can do here. See if By I can the way, it's good to see Jax. I, I saw, I saw Jax a uh, month or two ago, and uh, he was leaving after – this is when the, everything was still going on, and I saw him leaving, but I haven't seen him since. It's, it's good to see Jax in there. Hey, he put his phone on the ground, so he didn't answer you, but he says hi. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, Trent's uh, walking into the cages. I don't know how many people have ever had access to the cages to kind of see what that setup is like. That's a really impressive setup. And I know you can see Coach Littlewood has turned his phone around. You get a, an idea of what the, the cages inside look like. It's a really nice setup. Um, and I, and I, know that, I know it really benefits the players to be able to go down there regardless of what the weather's like. Yeah, yes, Chef, I can. Can you hear me? I can, I can yeah, video we, these yeah, guys while they you. get some work in. Um, let me make my way through the cage here and – I'll just get these guys doing some work. I think the big thing, too, is I know for a guy like Jack, when we're here a lot, just finding, like, a routine that worked for him. So I know Jack probably comes in the cage and has something that he does specifically every day. Um, as far as what he does to get ready or make sure his swing spills right. So usually he probably starts with a tee down the middle. He's just going to try to drive this ball, hit a, a line drive in the back of the cage. He wants to see that ball fly with backspin and just get this ball to fly, like, straight right in the back of the cage. So where he works the pitch down the middle, and he wants his ball to fly like directly to the middle of the cage. I can get some beat up from behind too. I think a good thing too is, especially for young kids, if there's young kids watching, just a basic step I can have Jack kind of show it is, just get in your stance real quick, Jack. If Jack just gets in his stance, just kind of a basic setup. He'll kind of put his feet shoulder width apart. And with young kids, a lot of times, we'll have them just set their bat right on their shoulder. So if Jack just puts the bat right on his shoulder, just rest it down. And that's like, that's a basic setup where it's just a, a, a real athletic start, spot to start. And so you watch a lot of big leaguers, and they're, gonna, they're usually going to start from this spot. It's just easy to repeat. So for young kids, you see his elbows are kind of down, relaxed to his side. Then he'll just go ahead and load from there and go hit. And then the bat kind of naturally just comes off his shoulder. So that's, I know for us, when a kid is struggling or doing something, even our guys, we're going to go back to something real simple, something they can repeat and, and be able to do over and over again. So after Jack goes down the middle, he moved the tee middle in a little bit. Um, so now he's going to try to drive this ball to, like, to the, the other corner of the cage. And the same thing, he wants to see this ball fly in the air with some backspin. He doesn't want to roll it over or pop it straight up. And you can see Jack's really good right now. Ball's fine right where he wants it to go. Showing off hey, a little that's, bit. That's what, uh, that's what got the eye of the Washington Nationals. Not only that, but his ability to uh, field as well. Yeah, for sure. Now, from here, Jack will probably go ahead and move the, the tee away. So now it's, we're going to work on a pitch away. And the same thing, he's just going to try to drive this ball, man, to the back of the cage, to the other corner. Hey, one thing real quick. I think it's important to know, and Jack, maybe you can – demonstrate this the ball down the middle we want to hit back up the middle gap to gap the ball that's out that you're working on now we want to hit middle oppo and then the ball in we want to hit pull up or pull gap right so maybe just show us um a couple swings of each one of those and, and maybe even explain it well like trent said right after i take a couple warm-up swings and i go down the middle the first thing i do is i move the ball in and that's just something that i figured out helped me uh, get the right motion because I figure if I sometimes I'll hit the ball outside and I hit a line drive to, to left field, but I'm not making the right move. So staying inside and then going outside helps me. But I was kind of take it through that when you hit. I mean, generally any pitch is a strike. You should be able to hit it in the gap, even if it's inside on the black. If you make the right move with the ball, it should still go to the gap. So that's really important for me when I'm warming up on the tee is especially inside and outside pitch. Almost all, the, almost all the balls are going to 
where the center fielder can make a play. Sometimes it might be a little bit more towards left, a little bit more towards right. But if you're making the right move, if the ball's a strike, you should be able to drive the ball to, to the big part of the park. The only time you're on the, you live down the lines is when you're you know, late on a pitch or you're fooled a little bit, but you keep your bat through it. So um, when I hit these, when I go middle and then in and then outside, you're going to see the ball still fly towards the, the back of the cage. But that's just because ideally that's where we want to hit it. Move it in. There's nothing like the uh, the crack of the bat there. That that sound right there that brings a smile to my face. Got to move it away for a couple. Got it. So those are just a, a couple of the things that uh, that obviously, if you're if you're looking to improve as a hitter, um, you know you have the opportunity to try to work on. I do want to bring in uh, Coach Bradshaw right now, uh, the pitching coach for uh, for the BYU Cougars, and I, maybe take it from the hitting side of things to the pitching side of things. What are some of the things as the pitching coach that you uh, have asked your guys to do? What are some drills that maybe you would recommend? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, for drills specifically, it's, it's kind of, indiv everything's individualized with our program. So I think, I think the biggest thing to understand is uh, universal drills aren't necessarily, in pitching, aren't necessarily going to help everybody. So I think when I incorporate drills, and I'm not, I'm honestly, I'm, I know a lot of drills, but I'm not a huge drill guy. Um, I'm a huge, like, uh, throwing program guy. So um, the biggest thing that I try to iterate from day one is the importance of the throwing program. And so basically from a pitcher's perspective, that's, that's a, our BP. You know, we can't go and take, throw 300 baseballs a day and our arm will fall off. Okay. A hitter can go hit up the tee 300 swings a day and they're going to be fine. So the biggest thing is the throwing program has got to be done with, with great focus and there's got to be specific things that you're working on each day. And that's why we do our journals. That's why we, we really pay attention and are deliberate with the throwing program. So as far as drills go, um, I'd say uh, a couple of good ones are if you want to isolate, okay, you get about shoulder width apart and all we're going to do is just turn our shoulders and throw, okay, that's gonna isolate our upper body so that we get a good shoulder turn. A lot of younger guys, they don't get their shoulders turned enough and they're kind of leading with the elbow. Another one is, uh, and it's kind of hard to explain without showing, but getting into a position to throw um, when our foot lands. So just like hitting, we can't throw the baseball. You can't swing the bat until your foot's down. In pitching, you can't throw the baseball until your foot strikes. So. Uh, getting into a position so when you lift your leg, foot lands, and then throwing from that position because you want to feel uh, your foot stable on the ground before uh, anything else starts. So those are, those are the two biggest basic things if we're not just throwing. In the throwing program, I like to have our guys move their feet um, with a little heel-to-heel -heel shuffle, keeping our heels connected. Um, I think it promotes good rhythm and timing and athleticism because ultimately uh, I think mechanics are important but I don't even like to use the word mechanics because um, you know if you're focused too much on that guys get really robotic um, and stiff and, and athleticism and rhythm is very important so the throwing program has to be done uh, with great focus and intent and if you're just trying to get a little bit better each time you throw then that's instead of just throwing to warm up that's huge um, but yeah, I know I kind of rambled on there, but hopefully you took something. Hey, Shaw, I think, uh, I think Shep got knocked off, but we, you and I talked about this earlier. Is there, is there any way like you could show us some general grips for different yeah. pitches, like four seam, two seam, and you know, just some different stuff like that. And kind of the mechanics of like release, what, where, how you want to release the curveball, how you want to release fastball slider. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll show you, I have a baseball. So I think one detail that kind of goes um, unnoticed is, so we, if we're looking at a four seam fastball, the ball is going to be spinning. 
with backspin, okay? And it's a four seam because you see all four seams when it's spinning, okay? So when we grip a four seam, we're gonna take the horseshoe, and I always like to put, have the horseshoe on the outside, okay? So if I'm like this, I like to have the horseshoe on the outside because the middle finger is longer and it matches up on that seam. So four seam, we're basically just going across the seam there, okay? Another thing, you don't want it, the seam to be right on your fingertips. You wanna go into the first knuckle so that it really rolls off, okay? And we're trying to spin that thing as much as possible, backspin, okay? And then it, there's a lot of ways you could throw a two seam, um, but one way is um, across the seams here. So it's two seam, because if we go here, boom, one, two, two seams, okay? So across the seams is common, deeper into the horseshoe is common, or shifting it over. But ultimately it's on the two seams across, or with the seams or across the seams, okay? Um, the next thing, so then, uh, let's see, we'll go change up. This is the most important um, for me is, we're basically, instead of taking uh, these two fingers, okay, we're going to center it with our middle and ring finger, okay? Um, the reason that it's gonna be slower is because there's a lot more fingers to roll it off. And these two fingers don't have as much force as these two fingers. So uh, you can go across the two seam with the two seam or um, shift it up from your four seam and go on that four seam, okay? A couple of tips are, you know, in any, any regard with two seam or four seam, the wider your fingers, the more it's gonna kill some spin, so it's not gonna spin as much. What's gonna happen is if it kills spin is it's gonna drop more. So on a change up, uh, you could have, there's a couple different kinds of change ups, but if our fingers are closer together, it's gonna spin a lot and be more running. But if we spread our fingers out, it's gonna kill spin and, spin drop, and drop. It. it depends on the kind of change up you want, okay? And then with that, we're really just trying to get really good extension towards our target and have a really fast ball arm speed on changeups. But ultimately just centering the ball with your middle and ring fingers and then kind of doing whatever you want with these. Some guys like to make a circle. Uh, some guys kind of tuck their thumb, but it, it's really what's comfortable for you. But we're throwing it off our th with our thumb and these fingers, okay? Curveball, we're pretty much taking a seam we're looking at, we want it to top spin, okay? So I like to take one of the seams on the four seam because I want it to spin a lot. So I'm gonna take my middle finger and my thumb and I'm gonna throw it over my middle finger. So ultimately with a curve ball, and this is the difference between slider and curve, the, the pointer shouldn't be involved at all. So that's why you see guys spike it or stack their fingers or even lift their finger off the ball because it's, you have to get over the middle finger. And you're, some cues I use are uh, get over the ball, okay? and we're trying to create topspin. Um, with a slider, it's a similar grip, okay? but you could kind of take the seam here, um, or some guys like to kind of go along this seam. Okay? But for easy, you're basically, you're gonna gr grip it the same, but with a slider, Okay, instead of getting over the ball, like a curve ball, we're trying to get through the ball. So we're cutting the ball in half. So we're gonna have more middle finger pressure and the ball is gonna roll off our pointer last. So we're gonna be creating like gyro spin or think about the way a football is thrown, like a bullet spin. So we're trying to create that type of spin with a slider. So curve ball, the pointer can't be involved. If the more it's involved, the more slurvy it's gonna be. But slider, the easiest thing to think of is really get through it and you're cutting the ball in half and we're gonna have more pressure on our middle finger and it's, but it's gonna, and you're gonna shape it with your middle finger. And the last thing it's gonna hey, Shaw, cut. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah, is your There point. we go, I, I, ap yeah. I apologize. I, I'm not, we're all, I guess, at the mercy of our, uh, of our internet connection right now. Uh, yeah. Hayden, can you hear me right now? All right, Hayden can hear me. Trent, Coach Littlewood, Jackson, Tuck, can you all hear me? Gotcha, Shep. All right, well, I, I apologize. Yeah, we just lost you for a little bit there, but I was just okay. rolling about pitch grips. Look, uh, apparently the internet in Vineyard is, is not what it's uh, cracked up to be. So I, well, I, I, apologize I apologize with that. With that. 
one thing I did want to ask you guys, and, and I want to ask the two players here this question, and I'm not inferring anything. This, you just happen to be the two players uh, on this right now. But we've had a couple people asking questions in regards to getting out of a slump. If you're, if you're having a rough stretch at the plate, how do you mentally get through that? What are the things that you do to work through that as a player? Hayden, we'll start with you, and then Jax, we'll go to you next. I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is when Pratt was talking about having a routine that works for you, um, I have a specific set of drills that I feel like get me back to where I need to be. So if I feel off in anything, usually I think it's just my mentality, putting too much pressure on myself or things like that. But if that's not working, then I go back to my basic routine and I, I do the things that help me feel right. What about you, Jax? For me, I think, I mean, if you have the answer to the question of how to get out of a slump, then I'd like to hear it. But I, th I think that most of it has to do with just continuing to – let me flip this around. I think it just has to do with your ability to, to – get back to the basics. I mean, sometimes when you're in a slump or you're not hitting very good, you try to change all these certain things and, and try to become a player that you're not really – that's not what, what made you good. So I think just trying to go back to the basics and, and relaxing. I mean, the more the more at-bats you get, the more ground balls you take, the more you're going to be able to get out of that little slump that you're in. So um, just sticking to it and kind of remembering the things that, that got you to that point in the first place. Uh, this next question uh, would go to the coaches – um, getting a lot of questions, people wanting to know how to get noticed uh, as, a, as a baseball player. Um, how do you, wh what are some of the things you guys look for in terms of when you recruit a player, what are, you, what are the attributes that you're looking at when you look at these athletes? Um, I think the first thing we look for is like, you know, obviously physical ability. Hey, you know, are they, can they run? You know, can they throw? Can they hit? And after that, we're going to look at, like, the mental side. Hey, do they play hard? When you watch them play, do they love to play? Are they a good teammate? You know, you're going to talk to some of their coaches and other people to find out kind of what they're made of. Um, so that, that's kind of the biggest thing is when we've got to watch guys. Obviously, for a pitcher, we're going to look, hey, can he throw a fastball for a strike? How hard does he throw? Things like that. For a hitter, hey, does he put the ball in play a lot? Can he hit for some power? Um, those are the first things we're going to look for, and then we'll, we'll kind of work off that. I don't know if Coach has some to add on that. Or. Yeah, Coach Littlewood, what, what are you looking for? You and I have talked about this in our weekly Instagram Q&As. What, what are you looking at in terms of recruitable players? Yeah, well, you know, the, the interesting thing is um, Trent and Brent are the ones kind of on the front lines, and so they go see the masses. Um, and then my job nowadays is really just to come out and ver validate what they've seen already. But Put your camera. I'll flip around. Um, I think we, for more than anything, we just look for athleticism and um, a guy who is a good teammate. I think it doesn't really matter if the, the kid goes four for four or 0 for four um, in a game. We, we kind of watch them from the time they get to the ballpark and what kind of teammate they are. Obviously, they have to have all the, the, uh, the skills and the tools to go along with being able to play Division One baseball. But um, we, we like guys who can run. We like guys who don't swing and miss a lot. We like guys who um, just are, are really good teammates and, and super competitive. You and I, Shep, have talked about um, Reed McLaughlin when uh, Coach Herring and I went out and saw him when he was a, a junior. And he didn't have great velocity, uh, maybe 83, 84 miles an hour, but um, he was really just such a, a great competitor. And uh, it didn't, didn't matter what the score was, he just competed his butt off. And so – those are the kind of things we like. You know, we're, we're together so much as a team um, that you have to be able to be a good teammate and get along with one another. So that's big things that we look for as well. But just um, physical, athletic, fast twitch guys is, is what we're looking for. We're going we're gonna to get to some, uh, some infield um, discussion in just a second. But, but uh, Tuck, I, I do want to ask you one question. We've been getting some people well, chiming in, chiming asking, in about asking about the coaching staff, staff and what, uh, what the dynamic is like. You obviously are a part of this. You're around these guys every day. Give everybody an idea, like maybe a peek behind the curtain on, on what this group it's, is like to be around. As the coaching staff or players? Uh, both. Okay. Well, this is a fun question because I'm going to get in trouble. 
<laughs> uh, thanks for that. Easy, no, uh, Easy buddy. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. Uh-huh. We got Trent in there, Mr. Know-it-all. Uh, no, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, it's awesome coming to work every day. Guys that, we, you know, we like to stay physically, physically fit, so we're always giving each other a hard time about our workouts and things like that. Um, just trying to come up with practice plans every single day, trying to stay unique in what we're trying to do. Um, what's really fun, too, I really enjoy just the, the banter that the coaching staff has back and forth, the trust for one another. Um, makes it real fun. Um, one thing I really, really enjoy is um, the amount of criticism they like to give me on a daily basis. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it's I, warranted. Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I walk in there every day and they got to give me a hard time about whether it was what I did for my workout. If I did way too many bicep exercises or whatnot, you know, always give me a hard time about maybe, you know, a certain recruit that I liked that maybe wasn't as good as they should have been or whatnot. You know, we always have a good time with that, but uh, I, I really enjoy that we can go back and forth with that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, uh, it's, also, it's, it's one of the places where you show up every day and you actually just enjoy being with them every single day. Yeah, a lot of fun. yeah it, it is it's a great group. Um, the time that I'm around you guys, it's fantastic. You saw Coach Littlewood setting up his phone uh, and, and you're kind of running through some, some infield drills. I'll turn the time over to you, Coach, and, and you can kind of explain what it is you're doing and, and some of the drills for those that maybe want to work on those skills. We're just going to sit down the phone and all right can you hear me okay yeah we got you coach yeah so i i saw a, a question from former player chris circuit and i don't know that maybe trent can video us here because i don't know my phone but um chris just asked us about some infield drills that you can do in your garage or without a field and so we'll just kind of show you what our infielders do uh, to start practice, they do this after they throw and, and stretch. They uh, do this every single day. So we'll just, it's kind of called quick hands. We'll just get down like this and we'll just work on picking the ball forward. And, and we want to, we kind of want to challenge you guys a little bit. And then we'll, and then we'll go to uh, back hands. So I'll throw it to Jack's back hand. So we're just working on seeing the ball when we do a back. Uh, backhand, I don't know if you can see, we want, we want to keep our eyes behind the behind our glove and then we just want to pick it. And then we'll just work, we'll work glove side. And that's kind of what we'll do to start the practice. And then we actually want to challenge guys. I'll challenge Jack, but he won't challenge me. Throw it a little bit harder and just a little bit tougher, just a little bit tougher for Hawk. Now we, now we want, want to move into just moving our feet, our feet a little bit. bit. And so we'll, we'll do the same thing, but okay. we're going to feel it and step through. So we're on our, our top hand, however we do it, it doesn't matter if you put it on top or to the side, it doesn't matter to me, but we want to use two hands and step through. Just kind of like a little short, just to get our hands and our feet working together. Then the next thing we like to do, I'll do this a lot in the fall. Everybody needs a pre pitch routine. So when the ball crosses the plate, we need to be ready to go. And so that's what we do. And we'll probably throw it 50 or 60 feet. So we jump across. And then you can see Jack's footwork. Right left field, right left throw. If you watch his foot, if you watch his feet, it's right left field, right left throw. Good. You can kind of see him get inside the ball. So when he feels it, his momentum's going towards first base. It makes it a lot easier. So one of the things we do is a high, high step drill. And let's do, let's go uh, from here left right now. So in this high step, and then he'll we'll come around and feel the ball like that. What we're trying to work on is lateral quickness. One more thing to do. It just kind of gets our feet, again, our feet are glove going together. So we're going to do a backhand now, and I'll show you two different, two different ways. Feel the ground ball is all about angles. And so when Jack comes across here, instead of taking a backhand, a bad angle back here, he's going to cross a, um, a little bit more of an aggressive angle. 
He was eyes behind his glove. And you can kind of see how he steps through that. It's just the progression of the, of the uh, first row we did. Good. And then I'll throw this a little bit slower. And instead of a backhand, he'll turn his glove over and come and get it, and he'll throw it on the front. So those are, those are kind of some of the drills we can do, just as simple drills. Let me show you, let's do a double shuffle. So one thing we work on a lot is double shuffle. What, what Jack was doing right there was just right left field, right left throw. We want to work on that ball that is hit hard to you. First base is not on first base yet. And so we're going to go right left field, shuffle, shuffle, throw. And if you notice, him going to do this quite a bit. You can throw it in a minute more. One, one more of those. So we want to work, when we start our infield progression, we'll, be, we'll do double shuffles, and then we'll work into just a single right, right left field, right left front. One more double shuffle. Good. And we want to gain ground. Uh, you saw when Jack fielded, from when he fielded that ball to where he threw, it was probably about seven, seven yards. He got a lot of, a lot of good momentum, a lot of distance on that. Simple drills you can do to start practice. You know, and, and coach, this actually is, this is a question that just came in. And for, let's say the situation, you would like to work on some infield drills, but you don't have anybody that can practice with you. Are there any infield drills that you would recommend if you are doing this by yourself? We can unmute Coach's uh, mic there. So everybody's there got one of these at their house right here. It's a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you can buy a pitch back if you want to, but shoot, just get a tennis ball or a baseball and throw it against, um, throw it against the wall and do the same exact drills that we were doing right there. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, that's what, that's what I did. And I'm sure Trent and Jack did the same thing, just um, hating up on the farm in Idaho. I'm sure he did the same thing or threw it against the barn up there. But that's how you do it. I mean, I remember throwing the ball up on, on top of my parents' roof and waiting for it to come down and going and catching it. And I do that for hours and hours and hours. So, you know, if you don't have a partner, you just have to kind of use your head a little bit and find ways to get things done. Well, and, and uh, you know, Trent, I mean, it's, we always hear the, the, the phrase, you know, practice makes perfect. I mean, it, it really – the reason it's said a lot is because it's so true – the more time you put in, the better you're going to get, and those skills are going to improve. And that's regardless if you're talking about hitting drills, whether you're talking about fielding drills. If you're, if you're a pitcher, the more that you practice and the more time you put in, the more results you're going to see. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's doing it right, too. I think, you know, you saw the drills coaches did. It's, sometimes it's not just doing the drill. It's, it's learn how to do it correctly. And the more you do it correctly, obviously, then that habit's going to take over when the game rolls around and you have a chance to, you know, produce in a game. Well, and, and Hayden, how many, how many of those drills do you think you've done over the course of your life right now? I mean, how many hours do you think you have spent doing drills just like we saw? Couldn't tell you my whole life. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's what makes you guys as good as you are. It's putting in the time. What, what is your practice schedule right now? How much time are you putting in a day right now? Just getting ready for, just to kind of stay, to stay sharp? Um, personally, I'm probably doing five hours a day right now. Yeah, and it's, um, I mean, between, do you, are you mixing yeah. it up? What kind of workouts are you doing? Yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I've been able to get in the gym. So I've been spending two hours here, and then I try to spend at least two hours a day um, working on skill stuff, whether that be hitting, throwing, outfield work, anything like that. But, yeah, I'd say I get close to four or five hours a day right now. Uh, before we wrap things up and, and want to tell you guys, thank you so much for, for spending this much time, being able to get this kind of insight. I know that a lot of people uh, are, are really appreciative of that. Maybe we'll just go around and everybody that's participating, just maybe a, a message out there to the BYU baseball fans that are, that are tuning in, um, you know, whether it's a message of hope that, uh, uh, or anything like that or any tip that you feel is important. Uh, Coach, we'll start with you. A any words for uh, for BYU baseball fans out there?
He didn't unmute. Yeah, coach's coach's mic is still muted. So, there we go. Yeah. So so I told our guys. Um, there's I'm on the field right now, obviously, but I told our guys there's going to be a, a time in the short or near future, hopefully, that we're going to be back on the field, and uh, they need to do all they can do to prepare to uh, to be back here and um, be better when this thing's over than they were before and just try to find a way to, to fight through it mentally and um, look for positives out of this thing. Um, because there are, there's some, there's some silver linings in this. You just have to search for them a little bit. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Uh, just find a way to find a way to be positive and get things done. Trent, what about you? Final uh, message to Cougar baseball, baseball fans, fans out there, from, out you. there from you. Hey, we miss you guys. It's a big thing. We miss having you in the stands and we miss playing and, and Costa, the biggest thing is, man, take some positive out of it. I know for me, that's the first in my life I haven't had a baseball you know, season to play or coach. But it's been awesome for me to be home with my kids. Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't get to spend much time with my kids, especially this part of the year. So I try, I try and take advantage of all that. And so whatever your situation is, man, just try to take advantage and look for something good out of this because there, there's something good that can happen. Shaw, what about, uh, what about you? What words uh, do you have for baseball fans? Yeah, no, we, I just miss, I miss it all, man. I miss being at the field. I miss the games. Um, but just kind of going off what uh, Coach Pratt and Coach Littlewood were saying is um, during a crisis like this is, is a time when you could really focus on, you know, some other things that are really important in your life and, and take advantage of all those times. And you said, well, what, when I have enough time, I'll do this. And when I have enough time and I'll do that. And so just really um, kind of taking time to, to, you know, improve as a person and, and uh, spend time with family and uh, turning negatives into positives. And it's going to be awesome when it's back. So, yes, yeah. yes, it is. Tuck, uh, what about you? I know you're, you're spending a lot of your time uh, honing those uh, lawn mowing skills. Uh, what, uh, what's, your, what's your message for baseball fans? Yeah, hey, my message is, is stay productive. Stay safe, first off, but stay productive. Try to find something daily that you can do to stay productive and to get better at whatever you want to get better at that day or that week. Uh, if you just sit around doing nothing, you're just wasting time and making this worse. But stay productive, stay positive. Like myself, I mow my lawn three days a week, and I try to get better <laughs> at that every single time. So, guys, we love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys again. All right, Hayden, and then and then we'll wrap things up with Jackson. Hayden, what's your message? Um, I think my message would be to the younger ball players. I think that it's easy to want to spend a couple hours, six hours, whatever, on the Xbox right now, but. This is truly an opportunity to get better. Um, it's tough not playing games, but it's an opportunity, just like all the coaches talked about, getting better and doing the little drills that coach just showed or drills that you have and just taking the opportunity to get better in, in one way or another. All right, Jackson, uh, you, get the, you get the final word on this one. What's your message to BYU baseball fans or baseball fans in general? Oh, my video's not on, so I'll just take the audio. But for me – First of all, thank you to all the BYU fans that continue to support us, hop on stuff like this, um, try and learn from us and when we, when we hop on a Zoom call like this, and we, we hope to see you back in the ballpark. It's, uh, it's cool to be part of the BYU baseball family. I mean, I'm grateful to be able to still be on this, even though I haven't played here for a year. But um, for players out there, like Hayden said, keep grinding and, and make sure you're doing something small each day to, to continue to get better for when we do go back, you'll be ready. Well, I, I, uh, I know that I speak for all of our attendees, and thank you so much for those that are, that are watching, those that have put in questions. I know I speak for everybody uh, involved when I, when I say to you guys, thank you so much for doing this. You know what you guys mean to me. You know what this baseball program means to me. It is a pleasure to be a very small part of it, and it was great to talk with you guys, and, uh, and I hope to, to see you in person very soon. Thank you so much for doing this, and uh, maybe, maybe we go one, two, three, go Cougars. How about that? <laughs> So we go one, two, one, two, 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 three. Go Cougars. Go Cougars. Uh, Thanks, Chef. Guys, thanks. We'll talk to you later. See ya. See ya. Thanks.